So what type of reaction are we going to do here? Are we going to do the nucleophilic aromatic substitution, or are we going to do the benzyme intermediate reaction? It's meta to it, so we're going to do the benzyme. That's and the there's also point. heat. That's right. We can't do the nucleophilic substitution because the leaving group is not in the ortho or the para position. So even though we have the electron withdrawal, we're not going to be able to do the nucleophilic substitution. Instead, we have to do the elimination addition with the benzyne. So again, you might see questions on the test that test whether you know which of those two mechanisms is going to be used. Sorry? If there is heat and it is placed on the para, then would the other one be preferred? Uh, then I don't know what would happen. They probably wouldn't ask you about that. Okay. Uh, you might get competition between them. I don't know what would happen in that case. That probably is not going to come up. Synthesize phenol. What would be one way to synthesize phenol? Out of a very long way would be NO2, NH2, and then forming as I try salt and then. Good. NH2. That was the main thing I was testing to see if you remembered that from last time. Very good. So previously we learned how to make phenols out of diazonium salts, and that's an important way to know as well. So. steps for that. So what would be step one? And then then you would uh, reduce it with H2P nickel or FEHCL. Good. Or the zinc amalgam. So that's one good synthesis for making phenol. Good. Now, what's another way that we've learned to make phenol? Through nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Right. Um, in that case, though, we would have to have a, uh, so what would we do first there? We would first add Cl2 and AlCl3, and then we would add HNF3 and H2SO4, and then we would add NaOH. a mix of ortho and para. Um, so there might be ways that we could maybe use, use blocking reagents. If we only wanted the ortho, we could maybe block this with a sulfon group first. Um, or uh, if we only wanted para, I don't know how we could well, just get para. Well, doesn't it not matter in the end because we want to get rid of 
Uh, it's possible that you might get rid of the NO2 eventually. That's right. That's right. You just want to get a phenol. That's right. That's a good point. Yeah, actually, this could take a while. All right. So we could do this, and then we could do the nucleophilic aromatic substitution. We just went through how to do that. And what's the other way we can put phenol in? Besides diazonium salt and nucleophilic aromatic substitution. Benzyme The benzyne elimination addition reaction. So those are the three approaches that you want to know. Okay. Well, we just went through the nucleophilic aromatic substitution and the benzyne reaction, so we don't need to go through all that all over again. Well, um, those are the most important topics now, I think, from that chapter. Nucleophilic aromatic substitution, the elimination addition reaction with the benzyne intermediate, and the Sandmeyer reactions with the diazonium salts. So this is the reaction we were talking about at the end of our last session. So to review, what would, what would happen here? Let's draw the final product here. Do you guys remember what the final product would look like? This is what we call the benzylic oxidation reaction because we're attacking these benzylic carbons. We didn't go through the mechanism, so the reaction is very simple. We simply turn the benzylic carbons into carboxy carbons. Do we have to know the mechanism? I don't think so. It's not covered in the book. We generally don't go through the oxidation mechanisms in this course. So, uh, yes, yeah, so we don't need to know these mechanisms. Notice that if there's more carbons attached to the benzylic carbon, then that carbon, carbon sigma bond just gets cleaved. So these are just cut off, and the benzylic carbons turn into carboxy carbon. Do you remember that there was one condition? Some benzylic carbons can't do this. Do you remember what does the benzylic carbon need to have in order to do this? It needs to have at least one hydrogen. Oh, CH2? It needs to have at least one hydrogen. So um, that's it. So it could be. Right. So for example, this carbon has three hydrogens, so it's fine. This carbon has two hydrogens, so it's fine. This carbon would have one hydrogen. So it doesn't have to be CH2, it could just be CH. And what was that thing that you told us that there had to be CH2 in between? In between. I'll find it. I think that was the idea that I, I was talking about the difference between the benzylic and phenyl. Oh, okay. Phenyl. We would consider this a phenyl substituent. Right. Yeah. But we would consider this a benzyl substituent. So if you're just focusing on the, the benzene ring, that's considered a phenyl. But if you're focusing on benzene plus a CH2 group, for some strange reason, that's considered benzyl. That's why we call this a benzylic oxidation, because we're oxidizing the carbon. Of course, it doesn't have to be a CH2 group. I shouldn't have said CH2. This would be benzyl as well. The point is, it's uh, benzyl if you're just focusing on the carbon that's attached. Uh, well, if you're focusing on the benzene and the carbon it's attached to, that's the benzyl. Although, actually, I guess usually it is thought of as a CH2. But it doesn't, you don't need a CH2 group to do this benzylic oxidation. You just need at least one hydrogen. That does get tested sometimes. Now, wh why do we need this aqueous workup step? What would be the product without the aqueous workup? Oh, minus, um, yeah. After all, these are basic conditions. When they're basic conditions, we don't produce carboxylic acids, we produce carboxylates. So we need this aqueous workup step to get the, the neutral form, which is probably what we would want. That's a technicality that we need to memorize. And so we did talk about this at the end of the last session, but I think I didn't mention that another reagent that this works with is uh, sodium dichromate. It looks like that's the one that you saw in your homework. So this would also work with sodium dichromate. This is the formula for sodium dichromate. I don't know whether this needs heat or a base or what. They didn't give any examples. But you might look at the answer key. 
for that. So two types of oxidizers, hot potassium permanganate with heat and basic additions are also sodium dichromate. Um, those both give us this benzylic oxidation. Now remember, these don't oxidize any old alkanes. They all, the only ox things they would oxidize are the benzylic alkanes. Sodium dichromate can also oxidize alcohols. 